So today I'm gonna use the same model which uh, Mr. Uh, Abdullah Jade used in his presentation. So today I'll show you how to perform time history analysis uh, using the model we showed you uh, last week. Okay. So before I begin, um, there might be some people who uh, didn't watch our previous webinar. I'll start from a bridge overview. So the bridge is still uh, on the bridge and it is pretty old bridge, which is built on built in 1914. And it is slightly skewed and span length is 25 meters and width is 8.2 meters. Today, uh, we will see the model with only a uh, superstructure. And we have some members here. We have main girders, cross girders, uh, stingers, transforms are, is uh, considered as loading. And we have also cross bracings and connections are neglected in this uh, today's analysis. So, uh, as I mentioned, as written in the title, uh, analysis type is um, time history, we will perform time history analysis. And it is also longitudinal uh, analysis of the bridge. And we are performing time history analysis sometimes in order to calculate uh, fatigue stresses. Okay. So we will see the model and and some people uh, might be curious uh, why we need to do the time history analysis. Uh, also in MyDASCV, we can perform moving load analysis using influenced line-based uh, analysis. And we can also get obtain a maximum and minimum result, but we cannot actually um, historical result on each member um, when uh, when the vehicle is passed through the bridge. So using time history analysis, we can see historical uh, stresses as a result, and we can see uh, historical uh, deformation and forces and so on. And also, um, this is about uh, bridge assessment, which is to assess the bridge, um, existing bridge. It is not to design the new bridge. When, um, when uh, sometimes we need time history analysis when we design the bridge, design the new bridge, because we might need to uh, check the vibration or acceleration or velocity and deformation along the time. Okay, so that's the reason why we need to perform time history analysis historical result and um, to see the stresses, uh, to calculate the fatigue stresses. So here's the process of um, how to perform time history analysis. Firstly, as it is a dynamic analysis, uh, it is not the static analysis, we need to define the mass masses additionally, masses for uh, the members and the permanent loadings. And after having the mass, we can define, we can set up eigenvalue analysis. Having eigenvalue analysis uh, as a result, we will get uh, mode shapes and mass participation factors and natural frequencies and natural period and so on, and et cetera. So using that mode shape result, the software we, um, use it, we'll use it uh, in order to perform time history analysis as well. I'll uh, explain, I'll talk about it uh, more deeply uh, later on. And we need to define the loading as a time history function, and we need to set up uh, the load case, uh, which, um, which applies like uh, different types of um, time history analysis. And also we need to decide uh, how we consider that damping. There are some some methods. And uh, we will simulate 
the train is passing through the bridge using dynamic load and loads, we will try it uh, together. And then after that, we can we will see some um, maximum stresses and deformation and also historical uh, graph along the time. OK, so I'll, uh, I'll begin with the time history analysis. Uh, firstly, I need to apply masses. Before uh, I apply masses, we already uh, defined the geometry of the bridge, mater material section, and basic support boundary conditions, and also permanent loadings. So with this attached modifier, we can just start, just go with uh, dynamic analysis. In this uh, model, uh, particularly, we basically have self weight loading here in Midas Civil. So the software will automatically calculate the weight density uh, have, because we have the shape of the function, shape of the element, and the length of the element. It will calculate the self weight automatically using this function. But this model um, doesn't use self weight loading but manually defined using uh, element beam load. It is um, up to engineer. This is, this is just uh, engineer pre engineer's preference, or there might be some cases, some people need to use um, manual loadings for uh, self weight. Anyway, so um, in this uh, slide, it explains every steps um, in order to do the time history analysis. And I will also uh, report, refer to uh, this slide and uh, follow the order steps. So here I have the model. It's the geometry of the bridge. And we have two different material and some uh, sections for the girders, interior girders, and the bracings, and so on. And we have boundary conditions here. And uh, we released moment uh, at the, some part of the beams. And we have also loadings. This is the self-weight loading for the main girder. And this is internal stinger and end stinger and and the cross gutter and we have transoms and the uh, rail as well so i'll begin with the applying uh, masses so in order to define the masses we can go to load menu and static loads type and then we could find load to masses function in this function in this load to masses function, we can add these load cases um, to this dialog. I can select uh, the first load case here, main gutter. I will add it, and the second load case as well. And I will do the same for other order load cases. Okay, it is done. So we have uh, one, two, three, four, five. We have eight load cases, eight static load cases. I added them all to this load load to masses function. Then this permanent loading will be considered as masses as well. Um, and also, in addition to uh, load to masses function, you should um, notice at uh, this function as well. When you go to structure menu, we have structure type function, and we have convert self weight into masses function. If you check on at uh, this function, then the software will automatically calculate self weighting, self self uh, self weight, and it will convert into masses. So as we defined loading using uh, this beam element loading, we should not uh, use this model. 
use this function, sorry. Um, if we defined um, self-weight loadings uh, using element bin load and then add it to a load to message function and also check on this function, then it will be um, the self-weight will be considered uh, twice, will be double. So in this model, I will check off this option. Okay. So this is actually done with um, the masses. Here's the same note, um, what I mentioned. And after having masses, we need to check sometimes uh, um, mass summary table, this mass summary table, whether it is uh, inputted correctly or not. So we can go to, as written in the slide, we can go to query menu and go to mass summary table. And we can check the masses uh, for the different direction. We will check the G direction and see the uh, masses for each node. And this is the total masses in this model along a G axis. Okay, so it is here, this is the summation. This is total amount of masses in this model on G direction, as I mentioned. Okay. So let's move on to next step, which is eigenvalue analysis. This is very simple. We can just input uh, one dialog and it is done. It will be done. I'll close the table and we will go to analysis menu here and we have eigenvalue analysis control menu. I'll click that. Uh, here we have uh, three different types of analysis for the eigenvalue analysis. I'll explain it with the slide. So firstly, a subspace iteration. People are quite often uh, use this uh, type uh, when we have um, the large amount of um, element, like many, many number of plate or solid element. Like when we, if you consider the soy using solid element or plate. And this one, this one, this uh, Lanchus method is uh, commonly used when you uh, perform a bridge uh, model using a beam, beam element. It doesn't matter if you have uh, some plate uh, element for the slab. Anyway, when you do the analysis for the um, bridge structure, uh, we quite uh, often use this Lanchus method because comparing with subspace iteration, it is much more faster. So if you uh, select Lanchus method and input 20 for the number of frequencies, we will have um, 20 mood shapes uh, as results. And the last one, uh, it is rich factors. So it starts um, analysis uh, with having uh, starting load factors. So defining uh, permanent load cases as factors and it will generate mode shapes. It is kind of uh, approximation um, calculation method so you should be careful if you want to use risk factors. But risk factors, I can say it is, it is faster than uh, even Lanchos method. So depending on the analysis type, um, you can think of uh, whether to use risk factor. So as I mentioned, um, if you use uh, risk factor, the frequencies and the mode shape obtained from a rich factor method are approximate result. So um, for the response spectrum analysis, it is a kind of combination of mode shape. So eigenvalue analysis should be, uh, should be accurate. So you cannot, I don't, personally recommend to use risk factor for uh, response spectra. But 
but as I mentioned, it is approximation uh, calculation. If you consider many, many of um, uh, many of modes, then you you will be close to um, the uh, accurate result as well. And uh, you can use this risk factor when you perform time history analysis, especially uh, analysis type is direct integration. Because if you perform time history analysis using direct integration method, you will calculate the every result uh, along the time. It is not uh, combining the result from the mode shape. So you can use this uh, risk factor, which is faster than other Eisenbildner analysis type. Okay. So let's move on to time history function. I will define the eigenvalue analysis uh, in the model as well. I will choose Rancher's method for today as an example. You can use other methods as well. And I will, I would like to see 20 modes, mode shapes uh, as result. And press OK. And it is done. OK. So I just assumed um, this train as an example. So it will be more complex, um, complex uh, specification when you have the actual project. Anyway, I just simpli simplified uh, the train for quick uh, tutorial. So I assumed the velocity of the train is uh, 60 kilometer per hour and total axle load is uh, 1,320 kilonewton. And the total length is 32 meters, which is a slightly longer than the overall length of the bridge. Anyway, I have to uh, convert this train loading to time history function. In order to do that, um, we can use this date, data uh, generator function. We can go to tools menu and we could find train load data generator for time history function. Okay, let's go to tools menu and data generator and we have train load data generator function here. So it will often open um, the additional module which is called TGS and we will go to generate menu. Okay, I'll slightly resize the dialog. Okay. Here we have um, Korean train as database, but today we will use user defined function. I'll define all the loadings manually. And the velocity of the train is 60 kilometers per hour. And element size is meaning um, the distance between the nodes. So we will define the track. Uh, will be, sorry, just a moment. Uh, I will define two tracks. Uh, the track number one is uh, on the right hand of the bridge and uh, track two is in the, the other direction. And those tracks have opposite direction. Okay. So the train will pass through uh, these nodes. So we need to measure the distance between uh, the node. Okay, so how to measure uh, the distance between the node is we can go to query menu and we have query nodes function here. I can simply click uh, two nodes, then we will see uh, the distance. This is uh, the node number with where I firstly clicked, and this is the the node number uh, which I secondly clicked and it is showing the distance between two nodes. So it is 0 0.42333 and I'll just simply input like uh, 0 0.43 uh, 423 meters. I don't think um, the result will show um, too much difference. Um, OK. 
comparing, I input uh, exactly the same uh, value here. Anyway, okay, and I need to input the loading. Okay. We can just simply type the ax, uh, the length and the uh, forces here. The first axle should have a zero meters as length, and the first axle is 180 kilonewton. I'll use tab key and space bar to input the value, and I will use shift tab key to go back to previous uh, input window. And secondly. 2.5 meters and also 180 kilonewton and seven meters and again 2.5 meters and again um, at this for this time five meters and 150 okay 2.5 add and 10 meters add 2.5 add okay it is done then press ok button then we will see the time history graph for our train um, as you can see it looks quite similar i'll bring this uh, function to my receiver so i will save this function i'll save it as uh, train um train one save and what's the next step um after having the function i need to go to time history function okay load menu we have dynamic loads and here we have time history functions and click add. Here we have input button. Um, we can go to uh, the same path uh, where we saved uh, the function here. And it is uh, actually file type is not identical. So we need to manually type the, the name of the uh, function name of the file. So here uh, I input train one dot uh, TGS and open. You bring the function like this here. So, so it is considering the velocity and the distance between the, the axes. So considering uh, the, L, the distance between, sorry, um, Sorry, can you can you hear can you hear me? Because one of attendees mentioned. Oh, okay, you can hear. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Okay. So if you have any problem um, with audio or if you have any problem, please use our question board. Okay, I will continue. I will continue uh, the tutorial. Okay, again, um, as I mentioned, so if you do uh, this manually, you need to consider the distance between the nodes and the velocity of the train and the axle loading. But this tool um, make you uh, more easier when you uh, define time history function. Okay, I'll name it as uh, train, deleting the number. Okay. So we have two more steps. We have two more steps. The first step was defining time history function. And second, um, in this load cases menu, we need to decide how many seconds we need to perform the analysis and the increment and the method. And after having load case, we need to combine the time history function with load case. Okay, it is uh, similar 
maybe I can say it is similar to moving node analysis. In order to perform a moving node analysis, we need to have, uh, for example, um, the traffic lane and the vehicle and using load cases uh, function, we need to make combination uh, between the lane and the vehicle. Okay, uh, as we did time history function, I'll move on to uh, load case function. I have some more description in the slide. Okay. So if you use this additional tool, when you import this function, you will automatically select a force uh, as time, is, time history function data type, but also you can um, input the function uh, with uh, acceleration or moment or normalized acceleration and normal value. So different um, data type can use different option. So let's say if you need, if you want to perform a seismic analysis, uh, if you want to input time function of the seismic and the perform time history analysis, you can maybe use um, normalized acceleration or normal type. Okay, so as I mentioned, I'll move on to time history load case. So here we have, you can see here, um, some input uh, values here. I'll explain it um, after following the, uh, all the steps. I'll define firstly track one. I'll use today direct integration and I'll perform the analysis for seven seconds. So we will check the result um, from zero second to seven seconds. And I'll calculate the result every 0.01 second. And I I'll, I'll would like to see all the results. So here's the meaning of that. Um, so I, I would like to perform the analysis for seven seconds. For one train, uh, it takes uh, around two seconds to pass through uh, one node, one single node. And as we have many nodes here and we have 25 meters long bridge, it will take more time uh, than uh, two seconds. So, here, um, here's um, the example, uh, how I assume the seven second here. So firstly, time for all axles to be applied uh, for one node, for single load. And plus we need to consider time for the last axle to be past uh, the bridge. I didn't actually calculate the second, the period. And additional, plus additional duration to see the dynamic behavior after the loading passes the bridge. I just assumed to be uh, seven seconds. You can perform um, more seconds or less seconds and check the result and then um, come back to here, load case and uh, modify the value here. Okay, before uh, and uh, for the time in increment. So it's meaning that um, how, accurately you'd like to perform the analysis. It's like, you it cannot um, perform the analysis for like uh, 0. Um, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.001 seconds, then maybe we need, we, uh, as we have too many calculation, uh, it will take like uh, one day to perform analysis. So we need to like decide how uh, accurately we want to uh, perform the analysis. So um, recommendation is actually um, at least um, one per 10 of the natural period uh, at the last mode. And it should be, it also should be less than the time increment for uh, of time forcing function, which we uh, defined in the previous step. But you don't need to always follow this recommendation because um, depending on the situation, um, even you consider larger uh, amount of time increment, it shows a create result uh, value. 
So it is actually engineer's decision to get to know, uh, get to understand time increment for a specific model. Maybe we need to uh, do the trial uh, and error, comparing the results uh, starting from the big amount and make more smaller and smaller. If doesn't if the result doesn't change anymore, that means at that uh, time increment value, um, it is like optimized uh, analysis. We catch the time for the analysis and the uh, accurate result as well. And step number increment for output means that how many steps uh, you need to skip uh, to check the result uh, for the time increment. Maybe you can uh, see this slide uh, uh, with this example and you get to uh, understand more um, precisely. Okay, and actually before we uh, decide uh, the end time and time increment, we need to decide uh, what kind of time history type you need to um, perform the analysis. So it is like a one time, um, uh, how do I say, one time action. The, um, if you want to perform the analysis uh, when train past the bridge one time, it is transient the first type. But if the loading happens uh, repeatedly, it is periodic, periodically, then you can use periodic uh, type. It is quite um, often used mostly um, uh, in the um, uh, mechanical engineering, I guess. So we can like for the seismic or transient uh, for the train uh, loading, we can use, uh, we can go with the first option. And we can uh, select a uh, modal method or direct integration method for the analysis. If you use modal uh, analysis method, uh, it shows um, much more faster, uh, much more faster than uh, direct integration. It is like a calculating a time history analysis, um, combining the result from the mode shapes, uh, combine the result from the eigenvalue analysis. But if you go with direct integration method, you calculate all the results uh, for every second. So it, 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 it can be more uh, like accurate uh, result. And uh, for the damping, we have um, modal method and also mass and stiffness proportion method and also other method, method as well. Uh, firstly, uh, um, speaking of uh, damping, we actually use um, modal combination in order to consider damping effect. Uh, even you go with direct integration in analysis method, even you select direct integration option, you will consider damping using like a com uh, combination of the mode shape because it is very hard and it is too much complex for the practical purpose to, to consider damping for every second. It is too much complex to calculate all the damping for every second. So in MIDA CV, um, it will use kind of combination of the all the mode result from the Eisenbillion analysis in order to consider damping. So anyway, uh, the first option, modal method, you can apply same, same, the same damping ratio to all modes, or you can specify damping ratio for each mode. So if you don't specify the damping ratio for certain mode, you will consider this value for other modes. And this mass and stiffness proportional option is quite popular for quite popular and normal for bridge engineers because it is it shows um, it is quicker than um, this model method. So it is using uh, this equation um, damping uh, equals to uh, some sum of coefficient multiply uh, mass plus and the stiffness and we are defining this uh, coefficient here. Yeah, 
So if you input um, one here, that means uh, you don't want to consider the damping for this uh, time history analysis. But uh, I don't recommend to use input one here because uh, um, uh, in order to calculate uh, the damping, um, if if we input if we consider one here for the coefficient, um, the software cannot accept um, the value input value, and uh, can it is hard to it is hard for the software to calculate the damping. So we if you don't want to consider the damping, I recommend to use 0 0.9 triple nine. I'm pretty sure uh, it will show uh, like a clues uh, result uh, to one. Okay. So you you can directly add the value for the using this direct specification method, but also you can uh, input the frequencies and the periods referring to eigenvalue analysis result. This is the first mode, and this is the last mode. Then you calculate the damping coefficient automatically. Okay, uh, I'll finish uh, the input value here. And I'll click apply and I'll define um, additional um, load case for track number two. I'll define it uh, in the same. Okay, so we are done with load cases. So we define the train, um, train function, train historical uh, time history function for the train. And we defined load cases, um, which is to decide which method we will use and uh, how many seconds we we want to perform the analysis and how's the damping ratio, and so on. And um, and now uh, finally using this dynamic load load, we will apply the time history function along the track. Okay, uh, I'll. Back to the slide to see the load number. Okay, as I mentioned, uh, track one is here, and here's the. This is track two. This is track one. Okay, so the track one starts from uh, on the right hand, and um, track two starts from the left hand. I will define a uh, track one uh, firstly. Okay. I can enter uh, the node number here to select the node, or we can use this select single option. Okay, anyway, so I'll use uh, the first uh, track one uh, as the time history load case, which we defined from here, and I'll select the train function which was uh, this one. Okay, I'll apply this function uh, using this load case to this node, the node number uh, 1057. Okay, and uh, direction should be a G direction and scale factor uh, can be minus one. Okay. So it is, as it is the first loading, I will input zero second. Okay. So we need to apply this dynamic loader load to all the nodes uh, here along the track. But uh, it is too tedious selecting the node and the input the, the arrival time manually here. So I will use table option. So if you click on this button, it will bring us to this uh, table and to make more easier I'll copy this to Microsoft Excel. I'll open up that um, spreadsheet.
So we can actually input uh, all the loadings using the table. So we have so we have kind of uh, choices when we input the loading. So we can use um, the graphical function functionality, or but also we can use uh, this table. So um, and how we do the ar arrival time? Uh, it should be different along the node. And here, I written I calculated the this second. So um, distance divided by velocity ve velocity will be uh, the second. So this is the time for the train to pass the um, one node. So for every node along the track, I'll add uh, this much amount, uh, this much uh, second. Okay, and I'll apply um, the loading from the the node number one o five seven to one thousand one. Okay, so I'll make the table. This was the arrival time. I have to add zero point zero zero seven zero five. Right. Okay. And scale factor always should be minus one. Uh, okay. Sorry. Firstly, I need to make it uh, until 1001. I'll copy that. Okay. So it is done. So we can do this for uh, track uh, number two as well. So I'll report to the slide. So first node of the track two is 2001. 2001, and this should be track two. Other things are same. And arrive time starts from zero. And I'll add uh, 0.0705 to the previous uh, cell. Sorry. Okay, and it lasts until last new number is uh, 2058. To Oh, sorry, 2058. Okay, I'll copy this. And copy this as well. And I'll copy all the cells, uh, excluding the first node, because we already defined using my receiver. I'll, we need to click the first cell to paste the value. Yeah, I'll press Ctrl V here. Then now we have a dynamic load load for all the tracks. Okay. Okay. So let's check whether we have. Yes, we have 115 uh, dynamic load load here. Now we can perform the analysis. So I, I don't think um, it will take like um, an hour because uh, we have uh, just uh, seven seconds for the period for the analysis. So it is showing uh, the progress. So it is now performing about the first load case, which was track one. Here we have 
uh, 700 uh, times that time step because time increment value was 0 0.01 and end of time uh, was seven seconds. And during the analysis, while uh, it is performing the analysis, uh, we can also uh, check the result um, from the menu as well. It doesn't matter. So unless you modify the value in the somewhere. Okay, so uh, after the analysis, we will check the vi vibration mode shape and natural uh, period frequencies and model participation uh, masses. And we will check also displacement and the bending moment and also define, I'll show you how to define the graph for this kind of um, result. Okay, let's see how it goes. Yes, it is done. So it took uh, 88 seconds for time history analysis. Okay, uh, let's go to result and let's see uh, mode shaped. Uh, firstly, let's, let's activate legend and control option. Okay, this is the first mode shape. I will undisplay uh, this function. Okay. So um, here uh, it is showing uh, for the first mode, uh, it is showing natural period. Sorry, I need to move out uh, the dialogue for the webinar. And you can check uh, the mode shape for other modes as well. And uh, just like the before, if you click uh, this button, it will bring us to the table. And here we have a natural period and natural frequencies uh, for each mode here. And also, I'll zoom the window. Okay, here we have frequencies and uh, period for each mode here. And we can check mode of participation masses along uh, different axes. Um, so we believe um, this uh, mode of participation uh, masses value should be, portion of this should be beyond 80% or 90%. But as we used direct integration method, it doesn't actually really matter. But if you use the model method for the time history analysis, you need to care about um, uh, the value of uh, model participation uh, methods. So some people saying 80% uh, is enough to consider. Some people say uh, 90, it should be beyond 90%. But I guess it depends on the situation. And let's go to check uh, deformation and deformation contour. We can check uh, time history minimum result for track one and select displacement and select maybe uh, G direction. We're showing um, displacement. We can change uh, the unit here, meter to millimeters then we can check the result with millimeters here. So 8.22 millimeters uh, at the node number uh, 0125, enter. So here it shows the minimum result. Minimum means negative value. So it is actually, we can say maximum displacement. We can also check um, moment diagram. I want to check positive maximum bending moment for track number one. There you go. And we can also check the result for second track as well. Okay, there you go. You can check the maximum uh, result and also check the maximum uh, 
the critical element here. So the critical element here is here. And then uh, lastly, we will check time history results. If you go to time history result, you can check the displacement, velocity, acceleration for different uh, direction uh, at the different step. You can select the step here, or you can just click on here. Today, we will not check displacement, velocity, or acceleration. I would like to see the graph. Firstly, we need to define the function, what kind of function you, you'd like to see. And I would like to see uh, the st uh, share stresses for this example for today. And uh, I'll select graph function and select uh, beam force stress and I'll add it to, uh, I'll add it as new uh, function. Let me op open up the slide for a second. Yeah, I would like to check out the share stresses for the for the element number 938. Element number 938. Um, this is for the track one. So I'll type here one here. And component uh, share G and I'll select the first track. And apply. And also, I'd like to see the result for the track two. Input same element number, stresses, and select track two, and OK. So we defined uh, two functions here for the uh, beam force and stress uh, type. And back to the previous tab, now we have function. I'll bring it to vertical axis like this and horizontal axis is um, time and oh not uh, okay and uh, click on the graph then we will see um, time history result with graph format so I guess this is um, when the first axis comes to the bridge and uh, the second axel is added and, uh, and and so on, maybe. And it converges to zero uh, when it is uh, seven seconds. You can zoom in the graph just by uh, dragging the mouse, dragging the graph. And uh, you can go back to uh, the previous view using this button. And if you like to, uh, if you check the um, um, acceleration or displacement, and you can uh, convert time to uh, frequencies graph as well, like this. Okay. So this is actually done for uh, today. Um, let me answer some of your uh, questions here. So as I mentioned, it will be uploaded to uh, this website. So when you register the today's webinar in this uh, web page, on the top of the registration page, we have by the Civil Academy button. Then uh, it turns to our website for previous webinar. Okay, uh, let me check if you guys have any questions here. Um, Sorry for the sound uh, problem, sound issue that we have in the at the beginning. Um, uh, about the certificate uh, certification, we don't actually have official uh, certification for every webinar, uh, but we can um, prepare. Um, some kind of certification uh, for you if you if it is necessary please contact us later on um, okay uh, why are you picking uh, those uh, values? Um, sorry, it was 
at um, 60 minutes after beginning. Um, I'm not sure uh, which value you are mentioning. Sorry. Slide 28. Would the train passes the bridge in seven seconds? Yes, I guess so. As you can see the result here, so it converges to zero. It means that the train uh, passed passed a uh, bridge um, within um, seven seconds. I guess somewhere here, from uh, two to uh, five seconds. So we can actually simply uh, calculate. So how many seconds we need for the train to pass the bridge? So velocity, um, the distance, the overall length of the bridge is 25 meters. So divided by the velocity, which is um, 60 kilometers, which is um, I need to actually convert this to meter meter per second. So I'm not sure. But okay. Anyway. Um. So the value I just assumed everything. So it can be um, modified uh, for the actual project for you. Uh, okay. Um. The previous slide show uh, linear, non-linear. Ah, so I skipped the explanation for the analysis type. So um, if you have like um, non-linear material, non-linear material properties, um, like uh, the general link mostly, uh, it can con this this can consider say um, it can simulate a seismic devices so which is which shows different stiffness depending on the load then if you use this function or but also we have not only the uh, general link but also we have inelastic hinge so we can simulate plastic hinge uh, member with time history analysis. And also, if you want to consider plastic material for the member, then we should uh, select nonlinear type. Otherwise, even you input nonlinear properties, and if you uh, select linear, you uh, ignore every nonlinear properties. So if you want to consider nonlinear material or nonlinear hinge, nonlinear link, you need to uh, select nonlinear analysis option. Okay, I hope uh, this is answered. Scale factor minus one is the if you input two instead of one, then you will consider twice value of the loading, and the minus is the negative direction. So positive direction is. Um, upward um, uh, from the gr ground. So you need to input minus value in order to apply the loading um, as a um, train. Train apply the loading um, from the sky to gr ground. OK. Uh, the formula is wrong. Need to delete uh, 0. Um, Sorry, which which slide are you mentioning? Can you can you tell me? Um, if there is something wrong after reading all, all of your question, I'll modify the slide and before I upload it to uh, our website. Uh, yeah, the time for track two is not correct from the spreadsheet. Yeah, maybe if we input different value, it will show you um, different analysis. Uh, ah, sorry, uh, this was wrong. So 
maybe I can do this again. Uh, thank you for the correction. Okay, there you go. I'll modify the track to load case. Sorry for this mistake and uh, thank you for the correction. Maybe I was too nervous for this webinar. And I'll perform again. Please just wait uh, for 88 seconds. What are you actually uh, what are you actually modeling two trains coming uh, onto bridge at the same time? Yes, maybe um, if you want to consider at a different time for different train, uh, you can add like um, you can input um, plus ten seconds to every um, service. Uh, Yeah, many of uh, audience um, mentioned about my mistake. Sorry again. Uh, can Midas capture resonance? Um, it is not automatic calculation for the to check the resonance. Um, maybe you need to uh, refer to the design code. How you consider resonance and. Uh, how uh, the natural periods of uh, frequency should be like a certain value. Uh, the Midas can show you the analysis result, but not it is it is not checking uh, whether it is okay or not. Um, you are going too fast now. I would just follow seminar based on on the output part only. Uh, uh, sorry for the sp speed because I have I had only one hour long for this presentation. Uh, please our please come to our website a week later. You could watch the recordings. Uh, can you show us the value that acceleration? Of course, I can show you, and I can even uh, send you this modifier as well. Um, deck acceleration. Uh, time is rigid. Um, this will show you only the um, certain uh, value during the analysis. Then I'll go to graph function. Yeah, function. Um, Acceleration for, uh, for example, this node and acceleration. And um, let's say component um, uh, G direction for um, track two. Okay. Back and I'll bring this acceleration function and enter the graph. So this is the acceleration on the nose number, where was it, um, somewhere here at the middle of the bridge. So you can see the acceleration. You can also check the displacement or the velocity and anything else. Um, so uh, I promise uh, all the slides and the recording of this today's webinar and the model file will be uh, uploaded to this website. We'll, it will be here. And uh, how you get to uh, this website, again, when you register for today's webinar, um, 
you should have seen uh, this button at the top. If you click on it, you can get to this web page. And you do uh, the same analysis using an earthquake time history data and how would it loading be applied? Okay. Um, so not using a dynamic loader load after having a seismic uh, data like this, you can apply this using this ground acceleration for certain direction. Then you will perform the analysis like uh, assuming um, the ground uh, moves uh, along the time. Uh, the train passes in uh, 1.5 seconds. Why are we considering seven seconds as uh, end time? Uh, it is not like actually we should consider more second. Uh, if you expect the maximum result before the 1.5 second, um, you can just perform for uh, two seconds, for example, or one second. So it is up to you actually, but I just wanted to see all the results why um, the bridge passes through the bridge, the train pass, uh, the, when the train passes through uh, the bridge. I think something is wrong with uh, track number two. Maybe I need to modify before we post it. Sorry for that. Uh, is the value uh, 0.0705 correct? Uh, yes, you are actually correct. It should be like uh, 0.025. Uh, to four five, I'll I'll modify it and uh, upload it to uh, our website. But I believe um, you've learned how to perform time history analysis. I I don't think the value is um, important for today. But but anyway, thank you for the correction. Uh, I appreciate it. And in the time calculation, you should three times to add up. Yeah, sorry about that. I made I made too many mistakes for today. Sorry about that. With the time thing, wouldn't it better to define the main beams in the exact axis and connect it to the beams with rigid links to have more correct moment value? Mm. Yeah, that can be other methods. And uh, I'm not sure if it is more correct about the result as I never um, tested it, but you can um, having uh, the modified model and compare the result, then you get to know about it. But I I'm not sure at the moment, I, I need to test it. Okay, I think um, there's as there is no more question, um, uh, we can uh, end the today's webinar. Thank you for joining uh, today's webinar again. And sorry for the sound issue at the beginning, and I apologize uh, apologize for the mistake with the time value, and we will upload to our website shortly. Thank you very much. And uh, if you uh, close the window, you will see the survey. Please uh, fill up the survey form. Uh, if you have time, it will take only one or couple of minutes. We have only eight seconds. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. We will see you um, on the next time. Thank you. Bye bye. Have a nice day.